This is one of the most interesting reads I've come across. It's rather complex and takes a while to digest, but it's 100% worth it. It's an official declassified CIA document and a terrific analysis of consciousness and beyond, known as the Gateway Process. While it's an older document and has been declassified for a while now, the fact that modern developments in science, quantum physics, psychedelics, and neurobiology confirm what's written within those pages is nothing short of outstanding. It explains consciousness in a profound and analytical way and merges knowledge from mystics from Hindu, Buddhist, and Tibetan cultures to contemporary scientific knowledge of Planck distance, Einstein's theory of relativity, and the works of Niels Bohr. The cosmic spiral and torus is everything, and everything is one. It seems as though individual consciousness is pulled from the collective consciousness using the frequency vibrations of the being. This applies to humans, whales, fungus, and amoeba. Mystics of past and present, including all ancient religions, understood these concepts thousands of years ago. Still, it takes much to open the minds of the most pragmatic, self-conscious, and uptight people. Eleven, consciousness and energy. Before our explanation can proceed any further, it is essential to define the mechanism by which the human mind exercises the function known as consciousness, and to describe the way in which that consciousness operates to deduce meaning from the stimuli which it receives. To do this, we will first consider the fundamental character of the material world in which we have our physical existence, in order to accurately perceive the raw stuff with which our consciousness must work. The first point which needs to be made is that the two terms, matter and energy, tend to be misleading if taken to indicate two distinctly different states of existence in the physical world that we know it. Indeed, if the term matter is taken to mean solid substance as opposed to energy, which is understood to mean a force of some sort, then the use of the former is entirely misleading. Science now knows that both the electrons which spin in the energy field located around the nucleus of the atom and the nucleus itself are made up of nothing more than oscillating energy grids. Solid matter, in the strict construction of the term, simply does not exist. Rather, atomic structure is composed of oscillating energy grids surrounded by other oscillating energy grids, which orbit at extraordinarily high speeds. In his book, Stalking the Wild Pendulum, Itzhak Bentov gives the following figures. The energy grid, which composes the nucleus of the atom, vibrates at approximately 1022 hertz, which means 10 followed by 22 zeros. At 70 degrees Fahrenheit, an atom oscillates at the rate of 1,015 hertz. An entire molecule composed of a number of atoms bound together in a single energy field vibrates in the range of 109 hertz. A live human cell vibrates at approximately 103 hertz. The point to be made is that the entire human being, brain, consciousness, and all is like the universe which surrounds him nothing more or less than an extraordinarily complex system of energy fields. The so-called states of matter are actually variances in the state of energy, and human consciousness is a function of the interaction of energy in two opposite states, motion versus rest. 